This is Solid Mechanics and FEA Eng 5443, the 2018 exam, question 6, and it's about strain gauging really. Um, essentially we're given this information about a strain gauge, we're asked to determine the principal strains and then use that to calculate the principal stresses and then eventually estimate what the bending moment and torque in the section must be. So let's go through that in order. Um, We've got three strain gauges at 45 degrees, and they are called C, B, and A respectively, and epsilon A equals 1000 microstrains, epsilon B equals minus 300 microstrains, and epsilon C equals minus 200 micro strains like so um, and we want to find the principal strains first of all um, let's just say epsilon a is at zero degrees epsilon b is at 45 degrees and epsilon c is at 90 degrees and this is basically points in the x direction and this is basically points in the y direction. So just make a note of where what the geometry is that we're going to use. Next I need to work out what to do with epsilon b with what's happening with the strain at 45 degrees and how I use that. Let's just write out this formula here from strain transformation which is telling me what the strain is at some unknown angle theta and in our case theta is 45 degrees. So we've got epsilon n equals one half epsilon x plus epsilon y, we know both of those, plus one half epsilon x minus epsilon y cos two theta plus gamma xy over two sine two theta. Uh, theta equals 45 degrees epsilon x equals um, 1000 microstrain epsilon y equal because we've assumed we've said a is pointing in the x direction c is pointing in the y direction epsilon y equals minus 200 microstrain so epsilon at 45 degrees equals one half times 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 plus minus 200 times 10 to the minus 6 plus 1 half 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 minus minus 200 times 10 to the minus 6 cos 2 times 45 plus uh, gamma xy over 2 sine 2 times 45. Um, so that's what I need and then the first thing to note is this term here is cos 90 which is 0 uh, and so that drops out and we know epsilon 45 is the reading that equals epsilon b which equals minus 300 times 10 to the minus 6. So substituting all of those things in, I'm left with uh, minus 300 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 1 half. Uh, this whole thing is 800 times 10 to the minus 6. This whole term is 0. And this is um, plus sine 90 degrees is 1 uh, divided by 2, so to half gamma xy um, minus 300 times 10 to the minus 6 equals 400 times 10 to the minus 6 plus a half gamma xy and that means that 1 half gamma xy equals minus 700 times 10 to the minus 6 and therefore gamma xy equals um, 
minus 1400 times 10 to the minus 6. And if I just uh, go back and look at what we're looking for in the question, uh, what we want are the principal strains. Uh, so now I move on to uh, thinking about the principal strains. And we've got a formula here for the principal strains. They are epsilon max and epsilon min. Um, epsilon max and min equals one half epsilon x plus epsilon y plus or minus one half square root epsilon x minus epsilon y squared plus gamma xy squared. And we know all these numbers, that's one half um, 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 plus minus 200 times 10 to the minus 6 plus or minus 1 half root 1000 times 10 to the minus 6 minus minus 200 times 10 to the minus 6 plus minus 1400 squared equals uh, well, this first term is 400 times 10 to the minus 6 plus or minus. Um, and I would need to work out what this bracket is. Um, and I've left off a squared in there. So um, And I get that that is the square root of 3.4 times 10 to the minus 6, um, which is about 1.843 times 10 to the minus 3. Um, and I need to take a half of that. That comes out to be about 922 times 10 to the minus 6. So the principal strains are 400 plus 922, which is 1322 microstrains, and that's the maximum strain, and 400 minus 922, which is minus 522 microstrains. And those are my answers for part A. OK, let's go back and look at the question now. Calculate the principal stresses at this section. Take Poisson's ratio nu equals 0.3 um, for this. I want to relate stresses and strains. I know epsilon x and epsilon y. And um, so I can find the uh, principal stresses from the principal strains. From that, I'm going to use, uh, this is part B, I'm going to use the fact that the principal stresses are aligned with the principal strains and use these formulae here for stress strain relationships. Uh, epsilon x equals sigma x over e uh, minus nu over e sigma y plus sigma z, but we're assuming uh, stresses are very small in the third direction, um, so I'll leave it at that. And we've got epsilon y equals uh, sigma y over e minus nu over e um, sigma x. And I know all of the numbers in these things. Um, I can say epsilon x is 
1322 times 10 to the minus 6 equals um, if I multiply both sides by e I'll have a slightly easier thing to work with um, because then I can say um, sigma y and sigma x are easier to to eliminate on the right hand side and e the Young's modulus given in the question is Um, so if I multiply both sides by Young's modulus, which in this question is 200 gigapascals, 200 times 10 to the 9, times uh, that equals sigma y, which we don't know, minus uh, Poisson's ratio, which is 0 0.3. Uh, sorry, this should, that should be... I'm doing the top one first. So it's sigma x minus sigma y. And similarly... 200 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by epsilon y equals sigma y minus 0.3 sigma x. Uh, if that's equation 1 and that's equation 2, then I can do something like... Um, if I do 0 0.3 times equation 1 and then add it to this one, I'll have eliminated um, my sigma x's. So this is um, uh, 0 0.3 times 209 times 1322 e minus 6. Uh, Seventy nine point three two times ten to the minus six. Sorry, times ten to the plus six equals zero point three sigma x minus zero point zero nine sigma y, and add up those two. Uh, add up this equation and this equation. The zero point three sigma x here and this zero point three sigma x will cancel out. The right hand side will be 1.09 sigma y and on this side I need to do 200 times 10 to the 9 times negative 522 times 10 to the minus 6. All of that comes out to be minus 25.08 times 10 to the 6. And therefore, sigma y equals minus 23 megapascals. Um, then I guess what I'll need to do is sub. Well, I'll mark on that that is uh, the first half of my answer. Just to be clear, substitute into equation 1 again, uh, which will leave me with that 200 times 10 to the 9 times 1322 times 10 to the minus 6. Is 264.4 times 10 to the minus 6. Sorry, times 10 to the plus 6 equals sigma x minus 0 0.3 sigma y and that is minus 23 times 10 to the 6 and rearranging all of that I will get sigma x equals um, Uh, two five seven point five megapascals, uh, which seems kind of high. That's higher than typical yield stresses for steel, um, but that's the number I've got. So I'm just going to go ahead and assume that that is correct. Um, I don't have any way of testing whether I've got my algebra wrong there. 
um, but we've got a principal stress of um, the major principal stress is 257.5 megapascals and the smaller principal stress is minus 23 megapascals um, which I guess means I can draw out my stress element as looking like this and we know that on that element the um, shear stress is zero because the um, when the principal stresses exist the shear st on the plane where the principal stresses exist um, the uh, shear stresses are zero okay um, part C then says what are the um, bending moment M and the torque T at that section. I think the easiest thing to do, it's a circular shaft like so, um, subject to a torque T and a bending moment M. Um, let's just work out what we expect the stresses in that to be. Uh, from the bending moment we expect that sigma over y or sigma max over y max equals um, m over i and we know most of these numbers um, that's the the stress on the top or the bottom um, I in this case is uh, look it up on the data sheet uh, bh cubed over oh sorry bh cubed over 12 is obviously for a rectangle um, I equals pi d to the 4 over 64 Um, M we don't know yet, Y max, well in a sense what we're talking about is what's happening on the surface of the shaft, so Y equals, uh, it's got a 40 millimeter diameter, so the further the surface of the shaft is at a distance of 0 0.02 meters from the central axis, and we know that D equals 0 0.04 meters as well. So we can relate a stress directly to a bending moment um, and then if we want to look at the torsion um, we can say uh, T well, uh, let's do it the same way tau over R equals T over J um, again, we're looking on the surface of the shaft. J equals pi d to the 4 on 32 for a solid shaft. And we know D and R equals 0 0.02 metres. Uh, rewriting those, I can get that M equals... I guess the stress that we're looking at here, the stress due to the bending moment, is going to be sigma L, it's a longitudinal stress that you're going to get, multiplied by I divided by um, Y max, which we already know is 0 0.02 meters, and T equals uh, tau XY multiplied by J divided by R. Uh, at this stage, we'd have to go back and do um, some analysis that's similar in length to A and B again um, to find these values of sigma L and tau XY. We know um, the stress state in the original orientation. We know therefore the principal stresses and strains. We could calculate the principal stresses and strains and this I think is what all I can think of to do to get through to a final answer here 
if we calculate, we know the principal stresses and strains, and we know the, um, we can calculate the angle of principal stresses and strains. So that's calculate um, theta p. And um, from principal strains, rotate stress element through negative theta p uh, using stress transformation. And what that would do is we'd go from the stress state, which I've described here, which is in the um, orientation of the principal planes, it would take it back to the longitudinal and circumferential orientation. And then this would give sigma L and tau XY. Um, that's another couple of pages of work um, and I'm worried about this video going over, I don't want to go much over 20 minutes. Um, so I'm going to leave this question there with a note that it's a long, long question. Um, and um, I, I think I've sketched out how to get to the end, um, but I think it's going to be kind of boring to watch. And uh, so I'm going to leave it.